Shalom. Call Hello, Yahweh by Shem El Shai, by Shem Rakakwadash. Double honors unto the apostles, <clears throat> double honors unto the elder bishops, salutations to all my fellow laborers, doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. To the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth, that be like unto the speckled bird, the Israelite foreigners among the heathen that look like the heathens. And to the Akwaf that are listening and learning, to you I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolm from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago, coming into another lesson in truth. And uh, we've got a lot of company out here today. There's a movie crew out here. I guess they're getting ready to shoot a movie um, here on Damon. <clears throat> we'll use this portion of the city. Maybe they're going to use this park. I don't know. But um, I'm going to try to get this over with and done. All right, because there's so many people out here today. But uh, this is an article that was sent to me by, by the beloved elder Yashawamba. So I'm, without any further ado, I'm just going to jump right into it. And this is, it is, it's on an RT uh, website, and it's called Putin Calls for Closer Ties with Arab States. The Middle East and North Africa, the rich is really no such thing as, as uh, the Mideast. That's just a part of Asia. Africa, the Northeast Africa connects to Asia, all right? So because we, we always say, where's the Midwest and the Mid-North and the Mid-South? You know, that's, that's just a made-up term, all right? But uh, it says the Middle East and North Africa are playing an increasingly important role in a multipolar world, the Russian leader said. Russian President Vladimir Putin has urged for stronger relations with the Arab League and its member states proposing closer cooperation to maintain regional security and resolve a number of ongoing conflicts from Libya to Yemen. Addressing the members of the Arab League ahead of the body's 31st summit in Algiers on Tuesday, Putin said the formation of the multipolar system. Now notice, America wasn't there. Where are the Western powers at? They had nothing to say about this. All right, the formation of the multipolar system of international relations is gained, gaining momentum, adding that the nations of the Middle East and North Africa, with the combined population of almost a half a billion, will play an increasingly significant role in this process. And yeah, that's going to be a lot of uh, soldiers come out of those numbers for, for the third war, for World War III. <clears throat> it says Russia is ready to continue to the f fully boost, it's, it's ready to continue to fully boost it ties with the Arab League and all its members, particularly in strengthening regional and global security. The president continued, we believe that the military and political issues that the Mideast and North African are facing, including the Syrian and Libyan crisis and the Yemeni and Israeli-Palestinian conflicts, um, should be resolved based on the universally recognized international laws with full respect for the sovereignty and territory integrity of states. So what that means is that the territory terri uh, integrity of these states have, have not been respected and international law is not being enforced. That's why all these atrocities keep happening to the Palestinians at the hand of the Israelis. And all the Israelis can say is they're the ones uh, firing the weapons <clears throat> that are doing the damage, you know, can say that Israel has the right to defend itself. You know, and, and, and that will be the, the thing to justify, you know, the mowing down of, of uh, women and children. All right. And that's just fact. Uh, matter of fact, let's go to the scriptures now. Let's go to Habakkuk 1 and 4. Um, and it reads. Therefore, the law is slack and judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous, therefore wrong judgment proceedeth. So all this gathering in the UN, all right, but uh, nothing's ever done about particular parts of Northeast Africa and and, uh, Palest and the Palestinians. And then you also have to think too that uh, these countries, you know, uh, you can't remember that that comment, the statement that General General West said about you know America when how they were going to war with seven countries and Iran was the last one those countries that were mentioned in this article none of them had uh 
you know, uh, uh, world banks, Rothschild banks. And uh, America doesn't go to war with people that, that have the same banking system. So it's all about the bankers and the banking system. All right. And through and through those banking systems, they control every as other every other aspect of a society, wherever they are. It's communications. It's education. It's it's entertainment. You know, they control every aspect. Finances. All right. But uh, let's go back to the article. So now Putin wants to get behind these nations and strengthen them. All right. And, and enforce the integrity of their states. All right. Continuing in the article, it says the Arab, the Arab League summit kicked off later, later on Tuesday with officials from all of the body's 22 members in attendance besides Syria, which had been suspended from the organization since its civil war began in 2011. Though there were some discussion about allowing Damascus to attend the events in Algiers, Syria was Syria own foreign minister repeatedly suggested the issue be resolved later for the sake of Arab unity, given challenges posed by the current regional international conditions, according to Algerian foreign minister Ratain Lamara. Uh, so basically, the, the you know, these Ishmaelites, these Arabs, Arab basically means mixed or mongrel because there is a mixture of Elam and Ishmael together um, in a lot of these Arab places. Um, but nevertheless, um, they realize that they have a common enemy and that they need unity in order for their people to, you know, to better themselves. So basically what they're, what they're saying in a nutshell is we need to dis disconnect from the, uh, the West so that we could uh, prosper and, and possibly even fight the West because that's what it's going to come down to because that's what the prophecies say. All right. The regional organization was forced to delay the summit several times due to the COVID-19 pandemic, including 2020 and 2021, and once again earlier this year. The two-day event is the first Arab League summit since some members signed normalization deals with Israel, moves which stoked condemnation from other members, namely the Palestinians, who have slammed any imp improved diplomatic ties as betrayal to their cause, Algeria, the host of the year's summit, remains a vocal supporter of the Palestinians. All right. Among the among the issues, the league is expected to discuss the Israel-Palestinian conflict, ongoing crisis in Libya, Yemen, and Syria, regional food and energy security reform to the league itself, as well as the conflict in the Ukraine and its aftermath. So it sounds to me like the dragons of Arabia are coming together. We're going to get to that. But first, let's go to uh, Joel. Because uh, World War III, you're going to have skirmishes all over the world, but the heart of it is going to begin um, over there in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, which is the area that we're speaking about. You know, that area uh, uh, where the land of Israel, Syria, everything, uh, Northeast Africa, and I would say anything within a uh, uh, thousand miles, uh, uh, five to thousand miles north of it. All right. But this is a Joel, um, the third chapter. And I'm going to start. I'm going to read verses one through three. And it reads, for behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations. So he's going to end the captivity of, of the northern and southern kingdom. All right. I will also gather all nations and bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them for my people, for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. So the number one thing about the controversy of Zion is that the land is parted. All right. And the Israelites aren't there. They're still scattered among the heathen. All right. Because this, you know, you can't have this, this what I'm reading happen after they've already come back. That makes absolutely no sense. This is the event which is going to take place, which is going to bring them back. So when we say that those people are impostors, we don't care if it hurts their feelings. It's true. And many of them know it, especially their leaders and the ones who are highly educated. It's the ones who, who, who are the low level ones that don't know any better and just inherited those lies that they continue to defend. All right. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot and sold a girl 
for wine that they might drink. So this is directly connecting the controversy of Zion to a slave trade that scattered them. All right. And then when you read the curses in Deuteronomy, when it talks about yokes of iron, all right, until you're broken, you know, and you would never see Israel, uh, you would never see it again. You know, when you read from 15 to 68, you'll find that, the, you know, the 1948ers do not fit any of those prophecies. As much as they would like to, you can't and deflect with the Holocaust. That's one hor horrific event, which is, which actually there's evidence that, that you know, that make it questionable. I'm not going to say it didn't happen or anything like that. Um, I wasn't there. But looking at it from an outside uh, point of view, all, all I can tell you is that, you know, you got your, you, all these museums and all this other place, but then you have a mountain of evidence that contend with it, and that evidence is never uh, allowed to go forth. So until the two things are measured together in front of me, you know, um, I'm just going to stay neutral on it. All right. Let's, let's put it that way. And that still does not, that one event still doesn't, you know, make them fit the curses that are in uh, um, Deuteronomy, you know, the, uh, the 28th chapter. That was a period of time. Okay. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to uh, speak against it because I don't want to, you know, them to delete my video. I'm not going to say it didn't happen. I wasn't there. I don't know. And all I can do is tell you that, that it, 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 it isn't, uh, it isn't like, um, people in charge in different countries and, and things of that nature haven't, haven't lied about history before. So there's a lot of American history that has been fabricated. Okay. So I'm just leave that, leave that at that. So let's go to, uh, verse nine and, uh, and 15, this is Joel, the third chapter verses nine through 15. And it reads, proclaim thee this among the Gentiles, prepare war, wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near let them come out, beat your plowshares into swords and your puning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves to come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause the mighty ones to come down, O, o Yahweh. Let the heathen be awakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there I will sit to judge all the heathen round about. All right? Put in the sickle, for the harvest is right. Come get you down for the press is full the vats overflow for the wickedness is great multitudes multitudes the valley of decision for the day of the lord is near in the valley of decision all right so basically multitudes and multitudes are the dead bodies and uh, all the people are going to be destroyed because when the lord pleads with them he's going to plead with them with fire all right you can go to uh isaiah 66 and isaiah uh 63 matter of fact let me grab one of those i believe it's isaiah 66 and 15 if I'm not mistaken, if my memory doesn't fail me. Yep, the water Yahweh by Shemel shot. This is Isaiah 66 and 15, and it reads, For behold, Yahweh will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. So that's how he's going to plead with them when he comes. All right? Now uh, let's go to 2nd uh, Ezra 16th chapter. Let's read a few more scriptures and we'll wrap this up. I think it's 2nd Ezra uh, 15. So I got to get back to the dojo. I got a client. Um, Slovakia. Let's start at 16. I got one at 15 too. This is 2nd uh, Ezra 16 and, and I'm going to start at verse 14, read through like 22, and it reads, Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon earth. The fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consume the foundation of the earth. So this, this war is just going to continue to, uh, to grow and escalate and the plagues and everything else. All right. Like as an arrow, which is shot of the mighty archer, returneth not backward. Even so, the plagues that shall be sent upon earth shall not return again. So these uh, man-made plagues and, and, and plagues that are sent from on high, right? And even the man-made plagues are still sent from on high. There's no such thing as free will, all right? The Lord is putting it in their mind to, to, do, to do that, all right, for those instances where that is true, all right? And it says, uh, verse 17, woe is me, woe is me. Who will deliver me in those days? And this is uh, 
and, and this is also letting you know this, the Ezra is, is here. You know, Ezra is among the Akim, among the brotherhood. Because he he was he he saw himself there when these when these days happened. Alright? His reincarnation, the regeneration. Verse 18, the beginning of sorrows and great mournings, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars and power shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? Alright? So with this with this diesel thing and the food shortages, uh the MOTB on the table and the World War III and now the demonizing of the Israelites trying to group us along with, uh, you know, with the Southern Poverty uh, uh, Center trying to group us with uh, Aryan <clears throat> races, KKK. You, you think Lord, uh, Senator Laura Bass already embarrassed the, uh, the FBI, you know, when she asked for the evidence uh, of, of, of the Hebrew Israelites being extremists in any other way. Uh, you know, and, and what violence and crimes have they committed in there? None. Zero. All right. The, these, these organizations, these white organizations that, that are mentioned in that uh, organizations have bodies on top of bodies. Hell, even the Black Panthers didn't have bodies on top of bodies. OK, they were the victims of, of terror. They never committed a terror act. You know, they were labeled as that. But, you know, what act did they actually commit? OK. And we're not down with them. We don't, we don't, you know, they're not about this Bible, our heritage. So that, you know, that, that false laboring, that's, that's gonna, you know, that's, hey, but that's just making them fit the scriptures of being false accusers. All right. Let's continue. It says, uh, behold, the victuals shall be so cheap upon the earth that they shall think themselves to be in good cause, even then shall evils grow upon the earth, sword and famine and great confusion. And that's exactly where we are and what's happening. Verse 22, for many of them that dwell upon earth shall perish of famine and others that escape of hunger shall, shall the uh, sword destroy. And, and famine and destruction of the sword is coming to America quick, fast and in a hurry. All right. If you think not, you're fooling yourself. This is 2nd Ezra uh, 15 and 27. You know, it's referring to those Arab, that Arab, uh, uh, group getting together and 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 putin russia basically the, that means that all those arab arab nations are now joining the BRICS. all right think about it okay um this is second ezra 15 i'm starting verse 27 and it reads for now the plague come upon the whole earth and ye shall remain in them but god shall not deliver you because you have sinned against him that being the two-thirds Behold, a horrible vision and an appearance thereof from the east, where the nations of the dragon of Arabia shall come out of with many chariots, and the multitude of them shall be carried as a wind upon the earth, that all that which hear them would may fear and, and tremble. Also the Carmenians, all right, that's talking about the Iranians, raging in wrath shall go forth as the wild boars of the wood, and the great power shall they come and join the battle with them and they shall waste a portion of the land of Assyria because that's where it's going to go down at. That's going to be the main place. It, there's also a scripture that says that Ishmael, you know, you know, is like a wild dog and he shall remember his nature. So these Ishmaelites, these Elamites, these Arabs are about to join on to, the, to Russia, China and the BRICS countries and they're going to declare war against the falling apart, uh, fractured uh, um, NATO. So with that, I'm going to give all praises, all honor and glory unto Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rekakwadash, Wa Ababa Ball, Kwam Yasharala Shalom.